Hi, this is Michael P. Coleman, Content Director for Brother Be Well, thanking you for checking out this series, this Trauma and Healing series brought to you by Blue Shield of California's Blue Sky Initiative. I gotta say this is and and it seems to be a, a bit ironic that you you've lived a life so far um struggling to in some cases accept yourself and then fighting for others to accept you for being who you are and being in the skin you're in and you're now practicing dermatology there's a bit of a, a irony there there's a, 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 a there's something there's a connection there do you think it's ironic that you're winding up helping people learn how to take care of their skin and you've spent your life trying to get people to respect you for the skin that you're in. Yeah, I, I, I believe so. Um, you know, to be able to help patients every day is always been a goal of mine. And it mm. just happened that to that I, I enjoy dermatology and I enjoy, you know, skin. A lot of people think of dermatology as two things. One is rashes and two is Botox. Um, which mm. is cosmetic aspect. Um, dermatology is a lot more complex than that. There is a medical component, there is a cosmetic component, and there's a surgical component, um, which all combine that um, a dermatologist has to be trained for, and you know, dermatology PA as well. Um, so, you know, I it's, it's always a struggle to try to explain to people what I do mm. dermatology. PA and that I don't just inject Botox every day. Um, actually, screen people for skin cancer and you know help them with their chronic condition mm. and manage them chronic condition so that they they can continue living a successful and meaningful life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. My my final question for you, Patrick, and and this is going to be you know you and I work together for just a few weeks, but this will be the first of what I hope is many conversations. And you've touched on a couple of topics that I think you're right. You you've given me ideas for other conversations that we can have, so I'm looking forward to those. But for today, the final question I've got for you is: you're now you're you're a public speaker nationwide. You're a mental health advocate. Talk about that work and the, the role that I would imagine that, that's quite healing for you. I, I know my work with Brother Be Well every day is healing for me, given the things that I have had to deal with in my life. So talk about the connection between that mental health advocacy and your healing. And then I'm also wondering if, if, if ever, as a final question, when you were, you know, dealing with your father and the baseball bat or you, any one of a number of challenges that you came through, did you ever envision a world where you would be advocating for, for mental health, where you would be helping other people who are suffering, who are experiencing ACEs, who are suffering from depression? You're now in a professional position to help them. Did you ever imagine that that might be the case? Well, to answer your questions, Michael, and that's a, that's a great ending question for us. Um, I've never imagined that I would be a clinician. I have always thought that I would be a nurse. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, an RN is very different than a PA because as a physician assistant, you actually diagnose, make write prescriptions and doing all the interpreting diagnosing tests that the, the nurses are not able to do. And my RN colleagues are wonderful and they, they're very knowledge in that sense. Um, but I never imagined myself as a poor kid from Vietnam going to become a PA and let alone the first dermatology PA at UC Davis. Um, so it's quite, it's quite a tall order. As far as um, being a um, mental health advocate, I think just sharing my experience is quite healing to me. Um, I, you know, I, like I mentioned, I haven't been able to afford um, to have ongoing therapy, which I will soon. And when I started my job, January 24th of this year, um, I will have healthcare and um, be able to afford therapy and, 
you know, heal myself in the process. Also, um, you know, being in various leadership position really helped me um, advocating for other people and, you know, uh, share the awareness and reduce the stigma and discrimination associated with mental illness. Because a lot of time, people would think that individual living with mental illness is a burden to, to society and that we are homeless on the street. Um, why it's, it's true that many individuals on, on the street are, and homeless experience homelessness has a mental illness. Not everybody um, has a mental illness live on the street. However, um, many of us is just one paycheck away from that position. So I encourage people not to judge. Um, and as far as a mental illness, one out of four adults in the U.S. already has a mental illness or will develop a mental illness at some point in their life, according to the national statistic. Um, so, you know, in order to reduce stigma and discrimination, we need to have adult open discussions about uh, mental illness, mental health conditions, and mental well-being, just as the title of our show, Rather Be Well. Um, that, you know, we need to talk about this issue and rewire our brain, particularly for men. I think, you know, toxic masculinity is a topic that is very talked about a lot these days, and it is true, um, not in the U.S., but in not, not just in the U.S., but also in Vietnam and many other countries. Men are not trained to share the emotion and express the emotions. Instead, they have to find other way to cope with their emotions and, and that can manifest into many, many bad things. Um, as we know, um, I, I never imagined that I would be in a position where I share such intimate and personal details of my life. But I think by doing so, um, I, if I can just even touch one person and change their life course trajectory, I would consider that a success. And as a matter of fact, as a professional speaker, um, I have gone to multiple school, high school, colleges, um, and other events. And there's have always been someone who resonate, who my story resonate with. Mm -hmm. And they would come up to me afterward and said, thank you for sharing. Um, and I always ending all of my speech with a message that if me, Patrick, as a gay, poor immigrant kids with a living with depression can achieve his American dream, so can you. You know, it doesn't matter what your skin color, who you choose to love, what kind of wealth you have or not have or the lack thereof, um, and whether you living you are battling with a, um, a mental illness or not. If you set your mind to a goal and have a plan to achieve that goal, and take just one step a day to reach your goal, you will be successful. I, I cannot think of a better way to end this uh, conversation today, Patrick. And I will tell you now, you said if you can touch one person by sharing candidly your story, you'll consider it a success. You can count today as a success because you've touched me with your story. Thank you very much for sharing it. And I wanna um, invite you to, um, thanks again, Patrick. I wanna invite you to, if you've seen or heard anything uh, today that is of interest, if you wanna hear more about Patrick Ma's story, go to um, our website, mentalhealthca.org. Um, Patrick's print, print story, written story is right there on that platform, as well as a host of others that you might wanna take a look at. There are videos, a variety of tips for you. And you can also uh, subscribe to the uh, Brother Be Well magazine, the Mental Health California magazine. Again, all of that is at mentalhealthca.org. Thanks again for your time today, for taking a second out of your day to tune in. My name again, Michael P. Coleman, content director for Brother Be Well, encouraging you today to take good care of yourself and take good care of somebody else. Bye-bye.